WCM. Hope you're doing well under quarantine. I've had a lot of reading time lately, and uh, yesterday I was reading Martin Luther, the father of the Protestant Reformation, his letter to Johann Hess during 15, in 1527 during the Black Plague in Europe that killed one-third to half of the European population. And while our pandemic isn't nearly as deadly as what Luther in Europe encountered in the 16th century, I found Luther's wisdom insightful to our current situation. Let me share with you an excerpt of that letter. It says, What else is the epidemic but a fire, which instead of consuming wood and straw, devours life and body? You ought to think of it this way. Very well, by God's decree, the enemy has sent us a poison and deadly awful. Therefore, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate and help purify the air, administer medicine, and take if uh, take it. Uh, I shall avoid all places and persons where my presence is not needed in order to become contaminated and thus perchance infect and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me, and I have done what is expected of me, and so I am not responsible either for my own death or for the death of others. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid place or person, but will go freely. See, this is such a God-fearing faith, because it's neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. You, you know, it's interesting. I found a couple of principles here that I think Luther really strikes on the head during our situation of crisis. First of all, he says, he, he asks for God to per mercifully protect us. He says, therefore, I shall ask God to mercifully protect us. And I think as we're going through this time of crisis, this is something that we all, especially in the body of Christ, need to be seeking. We need to be seeking the mercy of God, asking his mercy to protect us and protect others. Because God's mercy is great. In fact, I'm reminded of David in 2 Samuel chapter 24 after he commits the sin of numbering the people. He goes to the Lord and he says, Lord, I'm in deep distress. Let us fall into the hands of the Lord for his mercy is great. But don't let me fall into human hands. He says, yeah, there's retribution, there's punishment that is coming. But if, if it's going to come, I hope that it comes from the Lord because at least I know he is merciful. Beloved, now is the time to call and cling to God's mercy. All throughout Scripture, when his people called on him, he poured out his mercy. And I think Luther recognizes this and he declares, Therefore, I will ask for God's mercy. But secondly, notice he says that we should be wise, that we should be diligent in protecting ourselves and others in the midst of the epidemic. He says, I will fumigate, I will purify the air, I will administer medicine, I will take it. He says, I, I do all that so that I'm not responsible for my own death or for the death of others. If I get contaminated and spread it, I, I may be responsible for other people's death. He says, our foolishness might lead to the death of others. And he is reminding us that in times of crisis, we need to be good citizens of the world and think about the damage that we might cause others if we persist on having a renegade disposition. Paul writes it this way. He says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, he says, Let us, or let each of you, not look only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. If you ask me if I like quarantine, no, I don't like it. I, I, I would never make a good prisoner. I, I dislike it greatly. I want to be outside. I want activity. I, I, I want freedom. I want to be with people. But I realize that even in the middle of all that, that could be hazardous to other individuals. And, and that's my desires. But the good citizen says, I'm not just looking to what I want. I need to look to others. That's what the Bible is calling us to. And when you begin to feel frustrated in your moments of quarantine, remember that you are looking to the interests of others, that you are being a good citizen. Is what, that's what a follower of Christ needs to be. But finally, notice the new, Luther's uh, nuanced response here that shows a priority for the needs of others again. He says, if my neighbor, however, needs me, even though I'm isolated and I'm taking precaution, I will not avoid place or person, but I will go freely. 
He says, even if my neighbor, if there's this need and, and it's even detrimental to my own life and it may even cause contamination for me, then I will go. Jesus reminds us of the sacrificial spirit in John chapter 15, verse 13. He says, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. See, throughout church history, it has been the church who has often cared for the sick and the dying and gone to dangerous places out of a love for Christ and his people. And I think of those who are currently on the front lines trying to take care of the sick and, and trying to get food to people in crisis. Many of them have become infected themselves. Many of them have even made the greatest sacrifice and laid down their life for the cause. And the Lord would remind us of their great love. And yet even in these situations, Luther declares later on in the text, he says, yet my life, I know this, my life is in God's hands, and he will take me. Uh, and, and if he wants to take me, he will find me. So here is the balance that Luther is trying to describe. This is what he calls a God-fearing faith that is neither brash nor foolhardy, and it doesn't tempt God, but it also keeps our focus on serving God and serving his people even sacrificially. Luther understands that crisis brings about the best and the worst in people. And as followers of Jesus Christ, may it bring out our best. During this time of crisis, may he be seen in us as we cooperate as good citizens, as people of wisdom, as people of love and compassion. That's my prayer for you today. May God bless, and I'll see you online on Sunday morning.